Hello, everyone. I think we're good, I think we're good to start. Um, I hope everyone's having a great MADFest 2022. My name's Ozzy Bayram. I'm the UK country director at Ogre, the personified advertising company. Um, and it's events like this, walking around, listening to loads of really interesting speakers, meeting lots of people from interns, junior level, all the way up to senior people, that reminds me how dynamic, how diverse, and how full of talent our industry actually is. But what does that mean for us moving forward as an industry? Um, we talk about personalization a lot. At Ogre, we talk about personification a lot. Now, when I think about our industry, an industry that probably doesn't have the best reputation outside of our own, our own bubble, okay, and I, I, I speak to my parents regularly over the last 10, maybe 14 years in the industry, and they always ask, what do you actually do in advertising? And it's been really hard for me to crystallize actually what we do, okay? Uh, particularly now at Ogre, when we talk about personified advertising, the general response is, I have no idea what you're talking about, or so you're the reason the internet is full of ads, which is not great, right? It's not great perception, okay? Um, and you can see my parents here, if it works. Let's have a look. Here, on our wedding day, me and my wife and I. Uh, digitally savvy, but quite traditional in their perception of a career or of a job title. And I have an older sister that makes it more challenging for me because she's the head teacher of an inner London school. And they understand her role clearly. But more importantly for her, for them, sorry, they understand the value and the role she plays in wider society. You know, she is educating the future leaders of this country. And we can't say that from an advertising perspective. So I started to think, what purpose do we play in society as an industry, particularly digital advertising? And that's when I stumbled across something that's absolutely amazing. If you boil it down to the most basic level of what we do as an industry, is we allow something as culturally and socially transformational as the internet and all the content within it to be free for people to consume whenever they wish. So that doesn't matter where you are in the world, your social class, your financial background, you get access to unlimited amounts of knowledge, education and connections across the world, which was literally unimaginable to billions of people 15 to 20 years ago. And I think that gives us real purpose as an industry, and it should be something we're really, really proud of. And we're here to stay, right? As, as the migration of eyeballs and attention moves to digital platforms, particularly mobile, so will follow the ad dollars. So we've got a bright future ahead of us, but it doesn't mean we've got a future without any challenges. And them challenges are coming from three key drivers, and they're on the horizon, and they are approaching quickly. The first one is driven by regulators. So regulation is changing as the net is being cast around data and privacy and user consent. And that is not going to go away. In fact, the desire from regulators is only gathering pace. The second one is driven by consumers, all of us, every single one of us, individuals. We understand the digital ecosystem more than we ever did as individuals. And we are pushing back. We want to take ownership of our data and our privacy. We no longer want to be followed across the internet with that intrusive ad that which won't go away. And the third one is driven by, very much from a technical perspective, from the big, part, the big players in the market, specifically Google and Apple, with the changes they're making to their operating system. So while the future is bright for us, we're going to need to deal with these changes if we want to not just exist as an industry, but continue to thrive as an industry. And because of these changes, we see the market, essentially, or the internet being put into three key buckets. The first one is the walled gardens of this world. So you're thinking of your Facebooks, but also big retailers like Tesco or ASOS that are becoming media owners in their own right. And they will continue to thrive. In the future, they will continue to do well and grow for a few reasons. Firstly, because of their scale. Second of all, because of the huge amount of first-party data that they have access to and they can leverage and action upon. And from a retailer perspective, the huge amount of transactional data 
which is a very powerful data source that they can access. So they're going to do well, no doubt about it. They'll continue to thrive. The second bucket, unfortunately, we feel that the future is not as bright for these people in the middle. And this is a vast kind of segment of ad tech players and publishers that are continuing to build their business strategy and monetization strategy around cookies and IDs, relying on third-party identifiers and almost sleepwalking off the end of a cliff. And we feel that a lot of these will struggle. Quite a few of them will no longer exist in this new world of post-cookie, post-ID, post-personalization. And then the third bucket are the innovators in the market, the ad tech players that are really looking to set the narrative outside of what Google and Apple are doing, independently trying to curate what the future will look like for us as an industry. And these will see huge scale when D-Day does come, and they're already growing at a pace. And we at Ogre feel we're very much in bucket number three with our personified advertising. Now, you've heard me say it quite a few times, if it changes, which it will, but personified advertising or personification. And you're all probably thinking, or a lot of you are, I know the guys at the front are because they work at Ogre, but are thinking, what does that actually mean? Can you explain? So I will explain, hopefully. So four key pillars, really, to personification. The first one is you need to be based everything on data. It is a data-driven strategy. It is not guesswork. It is educated with data. And it's the ability to build personas at scale in local markets, but also globally. Now, we're talking about custom personas, not individuals here. The second element you need, you need to understand those personas and their behaviors, how they migrate across the internet and how to engage them. And then the third element is you need to be able to do this without relying on third-party identifiers. It is a cookie-less and ID-less business model. And then the fourth element is that we need to then deliver measurement and ROI. Without measurement and ROI, the whole business model falls down because we need to deliver for our agencies and our brand partners. And the way we deliver measurement, for example, is we only have fully on-screen formats to drive the best attention in market, as was recently verified with a Lumen study that we did with the Lumen guys that are here. So get speaking to them. They're, they're cool guys. But why is this important to Madfest? Why does anyone, anyone care about this at Madfest? And why am I here at Ogre talking at Madfest? Well, No Guts, No Glory is the theme of the festival. And I couldn't think of a better saying that embodies Ogre as a business. From its very inception, back in 2014, pre-GDPR, we started asking for consent. We implemented a consent management platform. And the industry thought we were crazy. Common comments were, why are you asking for consent? You don't need to ask for consent. Scrape the data, harvest it. It's all fair game. And the reason we did that is because, firstly, morally, we thought it was the right thing to do, to empower the user to say no if they so choose to. And the second element was because we predicted the future. We could sense a shift in, in the desire from regulators, but also from consumers that they were going to start pushing back. Was it a risk? Yes. Took massive guts from every single person in the business to say, we're going to ask for consent, and we're going to see short-term pain in our user numbers, etc. But as soon as GDPR came in, we were proved right, and we reaped the rewards. We got the glory for that. Off the back of that, we saw a huge surge in people, brands, overnight, looking for partners that had a fully consented user base, which we did. So that bet play off, played off. But we didn't stop there. Just over a year ago, we decided that we were going to go fully cookie-less and ID-less. And the similar murmurs were coming out of the industry that, why would you not continue to use a cookie when you can? And again, the same moral uh, dilemma is in our heads, right? But beyond that, as a business, why would we want to build our future on a piece of tech or a data source that we all know 
will be extinct in the not too distant future. We want to be here as a company in 20, 30, 40 years' time. We're not here for the short term. I'm sure none of you are here for a short career. Um, so why would we do that? But we continue to trade on cookies. But then we ask, OK, but what was next? Well, the next thing we did, we said, what does viewability mean? Why, as an industry, do we set the bar so low and say 50% of pixels in view for two seconds for a creative video that's cost a huge amount of money, time, resource to develop, to really push a brand message? But we think two seconds of 50% of that being in view is good, is a good job. So at Ogre, we've refused to deliver on that metric. We will, we will supply that. We will supply viewability numbers to our partners because we will know we will, look, we, will, we will come out very handily in that regard. But we feel that actually all our formats should be fully in view if we're going to deliver true brand awareness and deliver that brand message for our partners. So our metric that we use at Ogre, which is bold and we don't have to, but let's set the bar high, is 100% of pixels in view for a minimum of 50% duration of the creative. And the view for us is that that should move to 100% and 100% of the video in the not-too-distant future. So we've embodied this no guts, no glory from the very beginning, and we should continue to do that. But why is it important to us as an industry anyway moving forward? Just take, take away just Madfest, just as an industry. Well, this kind of experiment of hyper-personalization just hasn't, hasn't landed, right? And it's coming to an end as we move to personification as users and consumers push back and regulators tighten the net, okay? But the future is bright. We don't need cookies and IDs. The future is very bright for us as an industry. And as I mentioned, we've got the talent and the vibrancy to navigate some choppy waters and develop interesting technology that will allow us to thrive in the future. But at Ogre, we don't think the future is further down the line, right? We think the future is now. So hopefully, you've all learned a little bit about what we do at Ogre and our view of the future. Hopefully, you found it interesting. And hopefully, when someone asks you, a friend, a family, a parent, what you do as, for your career and what you do day to day that has an impact on wider society, you have a nice answer in your back pocket just to flip out because I think it's a really beautiful statement to be able to say when you, you know, where you spend 80% of your screen time, i.e. on the internet, we allow that to be free for everyone. And I think that's a great message to have. We've got a few minutes for any questions, if there are any. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I wanted to ask, actually, am I allowed to ask a question? Of course you can. Cool. Um, so... Are you, are you allowed to talk to us a, a bit at all about like how you managed to build these personas and like just how accurate they are? Because I know loads of people in like the tech, you know, I, I'm a, like almost a retailer, so we're like the walled garden, so I'm, I'm shitting myself a lot less than <laughs> a lot of other people. But there is a lot of people out there that are like, oh my God, if I don't have third party data, what the hell are we going to do? So like how foolproof is what you guys have done and like... Extremely foolproof. But I'll go into the detail you, now. Is that all right? Are yeah, I, of course like, it is. Is, there like a, is this like the magic sauce that you're not allowed to talk about? No, no, we can definitely talk about it. We don't shut up about it, to be honest. Um, <laughs> so, it. yeah, thank you for leading into a sales pitch for me. But um, <laughs> I've done a lot of those this, the past few days. So, essentially, in 2014, when we had consent, we had 2 billion devices consented in, fully opted in, and that allowed us to see uh, the, the total mobile user journey. So, what apps people were installing on their phone, what, uh, what was the usage of those apps and what websites they were browsing. Okay? So fully opted in users, allowing us to see the full mobile journey. Now, we, we no longer use that data in terms of it's no longer switched on, but we use that knowledge that we collected over six years as our foundation data. So we use that to understand what are the behaviors of particular personas. And we know, over time, behaviors do not change that fundamentally. If you're interested in sport and football, say, in particular, in five years ago, you're still going to be interested in sport and football now, right? So that gives us our foundation data. We then verify and enrich that data with millions of surveys, okay, at scale, across all our supply partners. And that really does give us 
detailed information about their behaviors, re-verifying that the persona is correct, but then also understanding what other interests this audience has. And then the third element, on top of contextual and semantic data that we get access to as well, is around the ad choices. So all our formats have some form of engagement or metric that we measure. And if we can see that we deliver better performance, we know we're getting the audience right. Um, and if that's wrong, then we re-verify it. But generally, we're always right. It's not guesswork. It's very much based on solid data sets, but pinned to personas, not pinned to individuals. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. It was really, really interesting. Um, can we give a big round of applause and some whoops? Woo! Thank you.